Hello, every, everyone. Uh, we have two days worth of awesome content ahead of us. I'm sure we're going to get a lot of insights. But you know, if your experience is anything like mine, you get a lot of interesting answers. But you also get a lot of interesting questions after every single talk. And uh, usually, my experience goes something like this, which is I listen to a talk, and then I start wondering, like, well, that's great. I just learned about web fonts or CSS or this new technique. But are we doing better? Are we doing worse? How has it changed over the last year? And as Steve mentioned, I actually have this unfair advantage, which is oftentimes when I have a question like this, I just turn to Steve and I go like, hey, uh, I wonder, uh, are sites getting faster? And then what usually happens is Steve turns around, kind of mashes on, a, on his keyboard, and then 30 seconds later, he turns around, it's like the answer is 42. <laughs> or to be more specific, it's like, oh, I just ran a query on HTTP Archive because I happen to have access to the MySQL database that you know, generates all the answers. And uh, the answer is 42. So as Steve mentioned, if you, if you guys are not familiar, uh, HTTP Archive is a project that's been live since about uh, 2010. And twice a month, we crawl about uh, 300,000 desktop sites and 10,000 mobile sites. And uh, what you may not have noticed in the past is you can, of course, get the nice trends and stats, which you, know, you get your averages and other things. But you can also download the raw archives. And there's about half a terabyte of data there uh, back to 2010. So that's one piece, right? And that's, you know, if, you're, if you're willing, you can import that. Uh, then I figured, hey, you know, at Google, we've built a lot of tools to deal with big data. And Dremel is actually an internal tool that we use and we've been using for a number of years. And externally, we've actually made that available as well as BigQuery. So I figured, hey, if you put these two uh, things together, we could get some pretty cool stuff out of it. And uh, that became the, uh, the BigQuery or the HTTP Archive data set on BigQuery. So it's all up there now. Uh, we keep refreshing the data, so every time the, uh, the run completes, which is twice a month, we have the new data available in BigQuery. And to get started, if you want to run a, a query to answer one of your questions, you can just go to this URL and uh, get your answer pretty quickly. And in fact, we've also started a new uh, kind of uh, community site called bigqueries.es, uh, very clever, uh, where you can share uh, kind of your findings, ask questions. Steve, myself, and a number of other performance uh, people are there just kind of collaborating on all kinds of awesome stuff. So I want to show you some examples. Uh, so this is BigQuery. This is how it looks. Basically, you just get a, a set of tables. You can see that we have different requests and pages tables. And at the bottom, we just have like the latest pages. So this is just stats for this one particular uh, run. And you have all of the detailed stats for things like what's the number of images, uh, number of PNG files, bytes, et cetera. There's a lot of different metadata in here. So uh, to start, let's do something very, very simple. Let's, let me make this a little bit bigger. Uh, that didn't work out too well. Uh, so the first question that you may want to ask is HTTP Archive the, on the website actually gives you uh, things like averages. But I want to know the quantiles. For example, how quick do the servers on the web respond in terms of time to first byte? And this is actually a query that uh, Steve came up uh, with earlier, and you can find that uh, by just using the quantiles function, which is like an extra function that we have in BigQuery. Um, and you'll find that uh, the top 10% uh, get a time to first byte response in 90 milliseconds, which is pretty awesome. But sadly, it actually goes downhill pretty quickly, right? By the time you look at the median, we're already at over half a second. So I know we have a lot of ops people in the room. We've got some work to do here. Um, and then if you go down, so of course, there's some actual timeouts as well. So there's sites that are failing entirely. But if you look at 80th and 90th percentile, we're over a second, right? So there's definitely room for improvement. So that's a very simple one. Let's do something more interesting. This is an example of uh, kind of a discussion we kicked off on BigQueries, where Andy was wondering, what's the distribution of requests per page? We know the averages, but how does this actually look? So we kind of iterated on this query a little bit, kind of rounded it up. And this is the actual histogram. Um, of the number of requests. So you can see that the median is roughly, let's say, 100. But then you have this very long tail. And uh, whenever you're analyzing performance data, it's always interesting to look at the outliers. Right? It's like, who out there has 1,100 requests on their page? Well, we can find an answer to that. We can uh, just query. And you know, if you can fix it, at least you can shame them about it. Um, so we can sort by the number of requests. Uh, and we got our okbob.net uh, weighing in at 1,200 requests. Uh, I would show you the site, but I'm afraid of pulling down the Wi-Fi. Uh, <laughs> then uh, we can 
get a little bit more specific and say, hey, well, I wonder what's the number of domains, right? There, it's just, it's one thing to have a lot of requests, but if you're downloading data from a lot of different domains, uh, that's pretty painful too. So you run this query and you find out that, hey, there's actually a lot of these Blogspot sites that are querying data from 700 domains, which is remarkable. So one pro tip, uh, whenever you're doing this kind of long tail analysis, open an incognito window and kind of cover up your window when you're opening the site. Uh, you get some questionable content sometimes, but this one is actually legitimate. So I, you know, I opened this up. Uh, looks like a you know, pretty nice blog. So this is 700 domains. And I, like, it took me actually a good five minutes to find the problem uh, on the site when I was looking at it earlier yesterday. And it turns out that the site is actually pretty good, except uh, they actually have this like, little blog roll widget right here which is showing you the fav icon and like the most recent article. And you scroll down, it's all good. Uh, but then they have this show all. And if you open the show all, it just scrolls forever. So what they're doing is they're downloading about 700 fav icons uh, from these domains. So kind of clever. And if you look at the other sites, <laughs> turns out they're all using the same widget. right? So there's a pattern there, which is we just need to fix that widget, and that would uh, get rid of this problem. So that's a gotcha. Now let's do something a little bit more interesting. Um, you know, those are pretty basic queries. Uh, here's something that's uh, a little bit more exciting. Uh, BigQuery actually allows you to run regular expressions, do joins, all the uh, crazy stuff. So here I'm doing uh, just kind of an arbitrary query where I'm saying, look, I'm going to look for uh, all of the or some of the most popular JavaScript frameworks out there, like jQuery, Dojo, and Angular. Like th these are you know, big frameworks which I'm going to claim that if you're using jQuery, you probably shouldn't be using prototype to go along with it. Right? Right? Maybe. Um, so let's actually run this query. And I'm looking for any site uh, at this point uh, that has more than, uh, is using more, more than two uh, of these frameworks. So you can see that Apple, for example, is using both Scriptaculous and Prototype. New York Times is using jQuery and Backbone. Uh, let's try our luck. Let's see if anybody's actually smart enough to use more than two. What do you guys think? Uh, we can run that. Uh, two seconds later, we have LA Times using jQuery, Prototype, and Scriptaculous. That's pretty awesome. What do you think? Should we go higher? Four? <laughs> Let's run that, too. Um, OK, Chicago Now coming in at four. Prototype, Scriptaculous, jQuery, and Backbone. And turns out you can actually modify this. I'm not counting for different versions. Some of these sites are also using multiple versions of jQuery. Uh, which I think is the double awesome. So <laughs> finally, uh, I'm going to show you this uh, cool little thing. One of the things you may not know about uh, Google Docs is we actually have a scripting layer uh, built in, which is like an awesome power feature. If you go to Tools, you can go to your script editor. I have it open right here. You can actually uh, build scripts to interop with different Google products. In this case, uh, you can actually send emails. So you can query Big, big Query directly from uh, the spreadsheet. So what I'm doing here is I'm just kind of building up a query, uh, the, my SQL statement, and then at the very end, you know, I, I submit it to um, to Big Query, and I basically just populate uh, the results in the, the spreadsheet itself. So what it's actually doing is it's querying the archive, and pulling in the data, and then I'm just using one of the built-in widgets to graph this data. So for example, here we're looking at the request total, and we're looking at the median, 75th, and 90th percentiles. But we can change this to, let's say, bytes images, which is the total number of image bytes. And I can rerun this query. We have this extra menu as part of the script. And it's actually querying the live data set. It updates the data. And you got your live, uh, live answers. So with that, um, I'll leave you guys with these two links. Uh, you can uh, find instructions for how to get started with this uh, data set there. And of course, check out the BigQuery's community. Thank you. <laughs>